Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Passive Passion Online Income. This is Kasim and in today's video, I am actually going to be sharing with you my March income reports, okay, income reports for the month of March from, from my Kindle publishing business. All right. Now, I thought of making this video mainly because it was time to share my income reports because it's been quite, quite a while since I haven't uh, shared my income reports with you all. Now, I'm a person that doesn't like to share my income reports per se, mainly because to avoid the eyes of envy and jealousy. All right. However, having said that, it's also very important to be transparent because uh, it's always good to walk the talk. Right. And uh, I do share my income reports in my private mastermind uh, of a Facebook group, right, which is part of the Kindle Income Academy. But then I thought even for my YouTube community, it would be good to share my income reports for the month of March. All right. Now, March turned out to be a good month for me all right, because I was able to make uh, an extra amount of $3,000 to $4,000 because in average, I make about fifteen to sixteen k, uh, fifteen dollars to $16,000. All right. And... Uh, other reason why I decided to make this video is also uh, more of a counterattack answer for someone who was actually saying that Kindle Publishing business is dead, Kindle Publishing sucks and blah blah blah. This was a person who had actually uh, contacted me, I don't know if it was through YouTube or if uh, I actually received this email, you know, so I, I felt, well, uh, it's high time. I, I really need to make this video and, you know, tell this person that, well, Kindle Publishing still works. It has been working for me for years all right and i've been in this industry for almost a decade now right before uh stephen james had created his course that was the time where i was doing my own research and i was you know looking for subjects and topics where i could publish a book but yes after taking his course you know uh, i got the basics and the foundation right and from there on there was no turning back at all you know i kept taking different courses and then tried uh, a lot of different experiments myself so basically, with all these experiences, I decided to put up my own uh, course and you know create my own academy where today I teach more than hundreds and hundreds of people around the globe on how they could replicate the same process and make money for themselves, you know, which could not just support their own family, but can also help them to start up other businesses. Like no matter what, what money they make from their publishing business, they could use to not just scale their publishing business, but also open up multiple other businesses, just like how I've been able to do so. So that's what I wanted to discuss. And uh, yeah, so without any further ado, let's get started. was the fact that uh, now, now just for you guys because, so that before you could ask me the questions I'll give you the information I have got currently three active publishing accounts all right now you must be wondering oh is it allowed is it you know I mean can we have multiple accounts yes you can have but again you have to be smart and the reason why I decide to have multiple accounts is because uh, I've always been a very conservative investor. Let it be any business that I get into or let it be any investment that I get into. I do not like to put all my eggs in one basket or I like to spread them out, I like to diversify. And that's the same thing I've done with the, the publishing business as well. And that's the beauty of this, guys. I mean, it's just like stock market. Say, so, uh, instead of buying several stocks, okay, you can invest in different different books. You can produce different books in different niches. You can create different brand names. You can create different author names, build a strong email list, build a strong following and thereby continue making money through your books, you know. So that's a concept I decided to uh, make use of when I started my self-publishing business, and that's what I've done. So I have three active publishing accounts, all right, which uh, brings me a good amount of income. And uh, out of these three publishing accounts, one account is my personal account. The other two are under LLC companies, all right. And yes, you can do that as well. The important thing that you have to keep in mind is that under no circumstances, there has to be any kind of similarity with your individual account. So what I'm trying to say is, if you decide to open your business account or your, let's say, your, your LLC account, there shouldn't be your name. There should be no data or details, okay, 
from your postal account that is going to be used in your LLC. All right. So let me give an example. Like uh, one of the LLC companies which I had actually set up. I mean, I mean, especially the first LLC company which I had set up. I didn't set it up in my name. I actually set it up in my brother's name. All right. So I set it up in his name, and the bank account that was open was also under his name. The third LLC company, or, or sorry, the second one because the first one is was under my name, which is my individual account. The third uh, account which was open was open under my second brother's name. Okay, so the LLC company was created under his name. Now you can create the LLC company under your name as well. However, just remember that the bank account which you create has to be under the LLC company's name, all right? So if you want to do that, that's fine. But I, I still wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I was using a different person's name. So that's the reason I decided to use, I mean, the name of my siblings. So three accounts, okay, which brings me active income passive income to an extent okay but it's not purely passive income because yes you do need to work on your ads you do need to look at look into your books you know on a regular basis and that's what my team does because uh, i've delegated all the tasks to my team i've got a fantastic team which looks after my publishing business so that i can focus on my other businesses you know like uh, now recently i've uh, started the uh, soap business okay i mean all these soaps are manufactured in mexico so anyways why am i talking about that this video is about uh, uh, the the income report so let's stick to that okay so without any further ado let's let's get right into it so this is the first uh, uh, so this is the first account okay as you can see on the screen from this account I've made I've made nine thousand two hundred and five dollars for the month of March okay so this is one of my oldest accounts okay of, uh, when it comes to self publishing I've made nine thousand two hundred five okay if you compute from all the markets and this is only the KDP account I'll be getting into ACX once I've showed you all the uh, dash codes from my from my KDP account. So this is the first account. Okay, I've made nine thousand two hundred five dollars. Uh, let's talk about the second one. So second account, I've made three thousand eight hundred and forty five dollars for this, as you can see on the screen. And uh, the third account, I've made five thousand four hundred and thirty seven point seven dollars. All right. Now that brings a total of eighteen thousand four hundred and eighty seven point seven dollars. Now let's talk about the ads, okay? Because if you're wondering that all this is my profit, it it's not. Now let me give you the number of the ads. So for the first account where I made nine thousand two hundred and five dollars, my Amos ads came up to one thousand two hundred dollars, right? And for the second account where I made three thousand eight hundred and forty-five dollars, my Amos ads came about six hundred and seventy dollars. Right? And for the third account where I made five thousand four hundred thirty-seven point seven dollars. Uh, my AMS ads came to $875. Now, if I was to compute all of that, it would come about $2,745. Now, I have to subtract $2,745 from $18,487.7, which brings me a net revenue of $15,742.7. So this is the net revenue I won from KDP alone, okay, which is $15,742.7. Now let's talk about the most interesting uh, stream of income, which is the income from audiobooks. Okay, now from ACX, if you notice the first screen, you can see I have sold 485 units. Okay, so now if I was to compute, now whenever it comes to computation of the uh, uh, income or uh, the money that you're making from your audiobooks, I always prefer to take the conservative uh, approach where I go for the minimum amount. Now, a 30,000 word book that is actually sold on ACX would bring you a profit of roughly about $3.6, okay? Because as you know, we, we, we only receive 40%, but, but which is a great, uh, I, mean, I mean, which turns out to be great return. So 40% from the sales of all your audiobooks. Right on the screen, you can see I've sold 485 units. So if I was to compute 485 units into 3.6, okay? it would give me a figure of $1,746. Now again, I've taken the the approach where it gives me a minimum figure, it gives me a minimum amount, okay? Now, there are strong chances and I'm, and I'm telling you, and if you are, if you are into the publishing business, you yourself would know this, that chances are you'll be making more. And the main reason I'm saying that is because this account also has a lot of bundle books, okay? For bundle, obviously, you're gonna be earning more. So I've got like three book bundles, I've got six book bundles, I've even got 10 and 12 book bundles, okay? So that brings me a higher royalty. But still, I, I always prefer to take the uh, minimum amount so that, you know, I don't over expect, all right? So this is my least expectation, okay? So I. As, as per the calculations I've done for 485 units for the month of March, 
uh, and if I was to compute with $3.46, uh, so I would be making $1,746, okay, from this uh, account which I sold 485 units. Now let's talk about the second ACX account from which I have sold 751 units, okay, 751 units, which would bring me an income of $3,004, all right. And uh, the last account, which from which I've sold about 273 units, 273 audiobook units, that would bring me an income of $1,092, right? $1,092. So if I compute all of them together, the total income earned from ACX alone would be $5,842. And again, there's no AMS ads here. There's There are no overheads. There are no unnecessary expenses, which I have to pay. So it's like, your passive income for me okay so that brings that brings an amount of five thousand eight hundred forty two dollars now let's compute the kdp earnings and the audiobook earnings so if you were to compute them or both of them together that would bring the total net revenue for the month of march to twenty one thousand five hundred and eighty four point seventy usd or us dollars okay so that's how much i've made for the month of march guys and um, Again, to all those guys who have been doubting this business model and, you know, who have been having this pessimistic approach to this business, let me tell you, you have to treat this business as any other business, all right? And if you want to continue growing your business, you have to be reinvesting. So if any uh, dumbo or idiot or douchebag comes and tells you that, you know, you can build a six-figure business, okay, uh, let's say with just 20 books, with 30 books, probably you can. But if you want to be consistent, if you want to be consistently making income, remember that you have to keep reinvesting a good chunk of your profits and you have to keep producing more and more new content. Look at it this way. Let's say now I now I do run several brick and mortar businesses too. Okay. Now let's say in one of my salons, if I've got 10 products which I've been which I've been selling that for a year's time. And uh, and to give an example, let's say if these 10 products, let's say it could be uh, shampoos and they could be conditioners, they could be hair serums, all right? So if these 10 products are bringing me an income of, let's say, um, to give you a realistic figure, let's say if they're bringing me $1,500, all right? Now a year passes, okay, I still do not come up with some new products, all right? Do you expect me to be making regular fixed income of $1,500? even after a year passes? Absolutely not, right? Because my customers who have been buying these products after a while are gonna get bored, isn't it? So in order to keep things interesting, in order to keep things exciting, I have to reinvest a slight portion of my profits and produce new products so that my customers get excited, they find you know some amazing value from the products which I'm offering them, and then they constantly keep coming and shopping, you know, in my respective shop and my respective salons. So that's the business model and the business concept which works in any goddamn business okay that you think of starting up so it's not rocket science remember that if you want to grow your business if you want to scale your business you have to keep scaling i mean sorry you have to keep reinvesting your profits back into the business so if you've made 20, if you've made ten thousand dollars from let's say having 20 books out there okay that's fine but don't get excited my friend remember that if you do not produce more content if you do not produce more books after a while that income is going to decline all right so that just happens with any given business. So be smart, be wise, and keep saving a good chunk of your profits on the side, okay, rather than squandering and blowing up that mo that hard-earned money, and keep producing more and more books, all right, which helps you to make more money. To give you advice from my end, I would say if you have built a business where you're making, let's say, more than 15K per month, just like how I'm doing, I would say, Invest at least twenty-five thousand dollars every year into the into your self-publishing business. So with twenty-five thousand dollars, you could produce roughly about thirty-two, thirty-two to thirty-five books, and that includes Spanish as well. I mean, that's what I do, and I only invest in thirty thousand word books, and and so should you, because thirty thousand word books tend to be something of value if you produce books that are fifteen thousand words or to, uh, like even twenty thousand words. Most of the readers are not happy with it, and that could give you negative reviews and. Uh, very soon your book can die into oblivion, all right? So take note of that and uh, yeah, just produce good quality, man. I mean, treat this business as a serious fucking business and you know, keep producing good content, keep producing good stuff. And for sure, your business is definitely gonna grow. All right guys, so that was it from this video. I will be making another video where I will be discussing about the investment or expenses required to start 
a self publishing business because this was an important topic that uh, me and some of my uh, associates had a discussion on a, a few days ago so yes do check out that video and uh, whatever i'll be discussing there is completely from my personal experience because when it comes to business investments i never make it's like i never take any kind of compromises all right and i never compromise on quality or standards and i ensure that i invest good amounts of money to create my digital product to create my digital assets which continuously keeps bringing in money for me right come what may whether it's pandemic whether it's crisis whatever it is my products have to be have to keep selling right and uh, as entrepreneurs as business owners we have to always be inventive creative and productive no matter what it is no matter what the circumstances are all right guys so be smart be wise and make sure that you are churning out good quality books and keep growing your business all right that's it from me for now guys you take care see you in the next one so god bless bye